On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. We just whistling all before the show because uh, we we got a great day here. My beautiful wife and better half Jenny Ann Chondo's in the studio. What's up, hey, Jenny? Hey, babe. Well, I've been practicing my whistling. Do you yes. guys want to hear? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> she cannot whistle at all. It is so funny. She always is like, I'll whistle and then no, I'll no. like walk away and and you'll hear you see her over there like trying to do it, going. <laughs> it's a skill. You gotta work up to it. <laughs> That's so like a lot of air. <laughs> with a little bit of a whistle there. It's trying to get something going. Yeah, it's now, coming together. We got Zach. What's up, Zach? How's it going? Here? Good, good. We got Matt behind the, the screen here. How's it going? How's it going? What's up? And, uh, Who else we, we got? <laughs> we whistle right. while we work, and, and Jenny just blows air all over the thing because not much of a whistle. Now, I will say... Mm-hmm. You're whistling more. You have more of actual whistle right now than you had a month yeah, ago. Yeah, because a month yeah. ago it was just... Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've been trying to teach my wife to whistle for years. She can't do it either. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to tell you how to. It's a particular how to thing. whistle. Yeah, I can't. I can't roll my R's, which is always a problem in Spanish. I can't do that either. Yeah. for me. But um, yeah, teach. I think whistle's one of those you got to just keep blowing it and stuff, and sooner or later it like It'll starts come out. right. Yeah. I've mean, been practicing. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like put that on the resume. Yeah, like I can whistle now. It's kind of <laughs> like whistling. It's kind of like chewing bubble gum and blowing a bubble. I guess. Yeah, so yeah. It's kind of a similar. Yeah, you just got to kind of do it till it works. Yeah. I guess, and then you're on your way. So I had. A, I had a, uh, we had one of our uh, old timers on that I met yesterday. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, that I saw yesterday again yes. as well. So I had my managers meeting yesterday. All my leaders across territory, in, and then we, the people who hit the summit, we took them all to um, the uh, Rangers game, rented a suite, and had a surprise visit from Chad Prather himself. Chad Prather, so fun. Did they love meeting him? Yes, Chad and Jade, his wife. Uh, well, they Jade both came out. Yeah, too. Jade oh, was wow. there too. Yeah. They both came up and hung out with everybody and got to have time at the game and stuff. And he's doing much better now. He was um, sick there for a little while and yeah. out. He's back on the road and today he was hitting it again in Fargo, North Dakota today. So oh, cool. it was a good time everybody had. So good to hear good he's doing him. all right. He should come back sometime. Yeah, I told appearance. him. I told him. I told him. And as soon as he's here, he's going to. Yeah, I love it. All right. Well, the listeners can look forward to that, I guess. Surprise Chad Prather. So we got a, a very relevant one for, especially this week, too, that just is hot off the press, Jenny. Uh-huh. Just hot off the Tell press. Me and then, more. Um, and so – Let's read this one, Zach, and, and, and get it going. Yes. Uh, this happened Wednesday this week, earlier Wednesday. Uh, well, Wednesday evening, I should say. Uh, not the biggest basketball fan, so excuse my, my French here, but I, I wanted to talk about LeBron James sinking this incredible putt at the buzzer. I mean, putt. he. <laughs> the putt. He comes. It's, it's Cavs. It's not a putt. Cavs versus the Pacers, <laughs> right? It's 95 95. Right at the end of the game, LeBron gets the, LeBron gets the rock. Right at the three-point line, he throws it, the buzzer goes off, and he sinks it. 98-95, the game's over. It was brilliant. The crowd erupts in the stands. Everybody flips out. It was an incredible victory. LeBron said he felt like a kid all over again. And that's what I love, too, is that headline was, I felt like a kid mm-hmm. all over again. How and, cool is that? And, you know, LeBron's in his early 30s, I think, now. Yeah. So that most would consider kind of your turning toward, especially when you play as many games as he has. Yeah. That, that beard's getting long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Let me ask y'all this. Do y'all think, for one minute, I don't care what your thoughts are on LeBron James. Nobody, if you don't like him, you have to admit he is the greatest basketball player in the game right now. Currently. You can't. Yeah, currently. You don't think of all time, do you? Um, currently. I, I, would, I can tell you. Let me tell <laughs> you this. Saying. I think you can argue him. Okay. I think he's absolutely yeah. has a solid argument for that. So, yeah. But no matter if you don't like him, you know he's great. 
Do you think – what do you think the uh, in that huddle before they went out there, if they said we're going to give LeBron the ball, what do you think the chances are that everybody on his team felt like they had a good shot at winning? Well, yeah, I think that it's probably a sense of relief. Even if someone else thought they kind of want the ball themselves, they also want to win the game, and they know that he's a sure bet or, or more they, of a they, sure yeah. bet than, than Do you think else. any of them had many doubts? That he couldn't do it? No, because no. he's so consistent. Yeah. I, I bet. I didn't catch who passed him the ball, but I bet whoever did. Like, as soon as they let go, I was like, okay, okay. all right, Ooh, yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, that's that's going to the right place. Yeah. So you were talking about how this kind of can relate to all of us in our own careers. Of course, we're not, uh, you and know, in the life. NBA, but yeah. And what I think about it, like, and I want to, like, I'm going to get to the minute part, the little bitty sections, the little bitty things. This is the stuff that people don't think about. Okay. Mm that I think make a massive, massive difference. So, for instance, your wife says, hey, hon, can you go drop that package off at the mail tomorrow because it's got to be there in time? And you go put it in your truck three days later. She goes, I hadn't heard that it got there. Did you drop it off? Oh, crap, no, I didn't. Yeah. Okay? And there's something important she needs there on time. You do it again. She asks, hey, can you go do uh, drop that mail off and you don't do whatever? Do you think she has much faith in him if she says anything to do and he says he'll do it do you think it's going to get done no you just stop asking exactly but but here's which is the, a little mark in the relationship yes, like a little it is absolutely yeah and, and honest and, and and i'm and you're and i'm being dead serious too yeah. and that's what people don't realize is the little bitty thing like that that you go well that's just a little thing but that little thing and one other little thing and one more little thing will slowly build up to a snowball of distrust in general because it, it all affects all aspects of trust. Because if you can't trust somebody's going to accomplish something and get something done, then it, it snowballs into all areas of, well, I don't believe you. I don't, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, you say you're going to do that, but it never gets done. And it go, in our work life, if you're working with coworkers and stuff and somebody's relying on you for one piece to be done, for a project to be finished, and it's got to be finished at 12 o'clock on Friday, when they go, um, we need to use Jenny for the um, creative drawing on it. Do they go, oh, she'll never be done on time? Mm-hmm. Or do they go, yes, please, because it counted in. And what you don't realize is what you may think is, well, it's just a little thing. That is a massive thing. That person will not trust you for a lot of things, mm-hmm. not just that one little. It spills over. Sure. So the other thing I think about with regard to work with that with that sort of thing and sort of being that consistent go-to person that is, you know, he's helpful in the way that he wins games. We can be helpful in, you know, like you said, finishing projects is it's like what you may lack in, say, for example, skills, natural talent, even education, I think you can make up for it's like you can um, sort of boost your stock, so to speak by being the person who's always consistent and by being the yes. person who actually gets yes. stuff done because you know if you, you look at like a room of coworkers, and it's like this person brings this this person brings this 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 it, and if you're kind of like oh wow I, I don't really match up to the yeah. rest of them in terms of these other things the you know the education the skill set but i know that i have control I'm over reliable. the fact that i'm reliable and what i do do i do mm-hmm. well and they always know they can come to me it's like you take yourself up another notch even without having the background, just by showing up and performing. Yeah, well, and and, and, it is, and it's just coming through when you say you're going to come yeah. through. It's a very simple thing. It's a, well, and it's like this. Do, I you, mean, see what I'm, do you see what I'm saying? No. When you look at like a room of coworkers, you're kind of like, oh, this person, this person. This. Yeah, oh, I'm picking up where you're putting down. And then sure. you're like, oh, wow, okay. But this person, even, you know, when I started, I, I kind of wondered, what does that person even do? And then all sure. of a sudden you realize, well, they do everything from, they know where the coffee filters are to, they know how to get into the email system to, they've got the contacts for the executive at the company we need to get but to. How many, but how and they're all, elevated. But it's also this. I want you to honestly think about this is if you've got that person, you know, you gotta e- you're got you going to have to email them three times to get something that you asked for. You email them and ask them for something. You know, you're going to have to email them two more times to remind them. Mm. Do you really trust that person? No. And you, you stop. And you stop. You you, think you, about, your eyes are open for somebody else you, you could go to. And, and, yeah, yeah. And, and you start. If you think about it and think about that person, you really start trust stop trusting them in all areas because it's a little bitty things. And that's what I don't think people pay attention to. See, a lot of people, what they how they justify it in their mind is like they forget the husband drops forgets to take the mail package. Mm-hmm. Just it's just a, it's just a mail package. Like, calm down. Like you're being crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Like you're getting. You know mm-hmm. that's how they do it. And they justify it's a little thing. But what you don't understand, it's all of the little tick marks that build up to a big thing. Sure. You and, actually, and the very simple thing of doing what you say you're going to do, returning somebody's phone call 
returning a text, you don't understand how important that little thing is that somebody can be counted on. Are you in the group of friends when you're throwing a birthday party for somebody and it goes, hey, Johnny, get this, Johnny, get that, you know, Jenny, get this, da, da, da. Do are, are you the person that the friends go? Oh God! Somebody's going to go get him. the yeah. somebody go get the wine because we know Johnny's going to forget mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you don't want to be that person. No. So, babe, and I don't want to be around those people. Mm. I just have one question for you: mm-hmm. Is the cup, the mug that I bought for Brittany for her birthday two years ago, still in the back of your car? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is there a backstory to follow? Though? <laughs> well, just just um, he was going to a birthday party. I think I was really pregnant or something at the time, and so I didn't go. And I said, "Okay, well, here's the gift for Brittany. Will you give it to her?" We've seen Brittany. No, it's like a running yeah, joke. Now we've right. seen Brittany several times since then and have not given her the cup. However, when I give you the mail to drop off at the UPS, he's like. A hundred for a hundred. He well, always. But that's the, like, <laughs> and like I, I wonder, but let's not that if you screw up from time to time. No, okay? I know. I'm just kidding. It's mo- I know, but I, but it is. I want people to understand. It's not if you you miss it one time. It's it's whenever you do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you feel like you're that person, like you don't want to be that. Like you gotta. If you really think about the little bitty things that people that annoy you, you're going to think about those little ones. Or if it's not dry, uh, delivering the mailbox, or somebody's got to always email you to remind you stuff. You're not a trustworthy person. You're going to slowly lose trust. People will lose trust around you. People will not want to be your friends. And all it is is very simple stuff. Return a text, return a phone call, and build a system in place to remind you of stuff. If you're having those issues, Mm -hmm. set a reminder in a calendar. Do whatever you kind of do. But it's more so you got to know that that matters. I think that's the most important thing. You've got to change it because it does matter. Not dropping off the mail when you say you're going to drop off the mail. Um, Not uh, finishing the project online when you say to... Or not returning the email, not returning the phone call, that matters. In any personal relationship you have, those little tick marks will wear it thin and you will become somebody somebody doesn't want to be around. So make those changes today more than anything else. Understand it matters. We'll be back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Keith Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. I can tell you this. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not going to forget ever dropping a mail package off after I've run my mouth as much as I have right now. <laughs> I know. Like, like that's one of those things that like I have a feeling <laughs> will real. be thrown on Instagram and Facebook, everything, as soon as I forget a mail package. Oh, she's yeah. got it on video now. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, it's recorded. I do. Down. Well, I, I mean, I'm such an Amazon order and, yeah. uh, you know, I do every subscription service there is. So I'm, I am mailing a lot. You don't forget anything. I don't. No. She's that, like, is that a com- is that, wait, is that no, a compliment? A like so, I do what no, I say. Yeah. What I'm you always do what you say you're going to do. Oh, thanks, Hands babe. down, you always do. Thank you so much. I mean, it, it is on point. Like, it's like, honestly, it's like, oh, man, we're out of mini wheats. And like five minutes later, mini wheats is delivered to the door. And I'm like, did well, you just, how did that happen? Because I am, like VP, I am VP inventory. Oh, yeah, yeah. We house. give each other VP roles. Uh, VP. I am um, <laughs> VP milk for our baby. Yep. Okay. I am. Um, I'm VP of travel. Yeah, you're VP of travel. Anybody VP goes of anywhere, I always yard. book all that. I'm all VP right. of yard. I'm VP of interior just like things have you know toilet paper paper towels yeah. it kind of goes under inventory but he's vp bills yep i'm vp brighton's wardrobe yep brighton's wardrobe so we got see that's how we do it. we set it out of we know what we got she counts on it I we count need to go. probably name a vp water filter yeah. person yep we both don't like that 
Well, so the only reason I don't is because every time I change it, I screw something up and it leaks water for a couple of days, and I got to fix it all and do it because I guess I'm doing something wrong. You got it hooked up like a water main? Or <sighs> no, it's in, no, it's in the fridge. No, it's in the fridge. It's like every time it It's really a simple it. process, and but every time I do it, it just it leaks water somewhere and it drives me nuts. Oh, right. but Heath changed the faucet the other really? day. Um, yeah. yeah, the, oh, the wow. water wouldn't stop. The water like wouldn't stop running. We went to give Brighton a bath. Yeah. I don't know. And um, so he figured out how to turn off the water to the house and change the whole faucet. He yeah, knows. It, was bro- it was broke. It was so not. he's VP water now. Yeah, VP of water. Anyway, yeah, VP of speaking water. of water, there's th- these. Th- this headline <laughs> is in need of a lot of water. What a segue! I love yeah. that. Yes, uh, this is a headline really concerning the California wildfires, which isn't something we've talked about in this show. At least 28 wildfires are burning as of last Wednesday morning in the southwest and southern plains of the United States. Winds are expected to subside, but. They're still going to keep moving around. People in Arizona and New Mexico are getting warnings about these now. California, of course, is still dealing with them. And I spotted this headline, and and, and I, I sent it to you with, with the hope we'd talk about it, just because I saw it, and for some reason, I, the first thing I thought was, you know, this might be good for a second shot. My, mm-hmm. my angle is this. We've talked about getting in front of problems before. We've talked about keeping yourself away from problem situations. We've talked about maybe how to handle small problems once they come up and make sure they don't happen again. That was like the rust on the Ferris wheel story. You remember that Mm -hmm. one. This one is, what do you do when a problem is not only much bigger than you had previously anticipated, but is almost completely out of your control? Because when we talk about these wildfires, this is a national issue. You have yep. firefighters crossing state. I mean, this is a big problem, like big problems. Yep. What, what do you got? I mean, there's there's so much because it is how many times in your personal life has something from, you know, you got people with their kids have done something bad and it was somebody else and now it's a big thing. Everybody mm-hmm. knows sure. schools around, right? And you just feel like it's going everywhere to at coworkers at work to I mean, you, you screwed up in your relationship and you, you feel like it's just spreading like crazy and everybody's like, what do I do, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, how many times has that happened? It happens to everybody. Right? I mean, has have, have you ever felt like things are I out mean, of I've never screwed up, first of all. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. That's true. Um, <laughs> you are perfect. No, I, I definitely. And you feel very hopeless. It feels like you want to kind of shut in and mm-hmm. n- ignore everybody, block everything out, which is the absolute worst thing you can do. Yeah. I believe that when things feel like they're out of control, they're spreading like crazy. And like it's even like you spreading, you know, like these people out there trying to fight those fires, right? It's like it's going crazy. Stop, take a breath and do one right thing. Stop, take a breath, do one right thing. That's all you can do. Right how? One right like um like right towards fixing your problem? Your or, wife or? is mad at you because you've really screwed up and you've done two or three things and it's like spreading throughout every community, right? Everybody's knowing about sure. it. And everybody what it is. Yeah. Um, go do the dishes for your wife. <laughs> go do the laundry. Yeah. You know, go clean up what you've never cleaned up, what you've always said you would. Um, show up on time. Mm-hmm. One right thing. I mean, because honestly, that's the thing is you can't look at it. If you look at any problem as a massive wildfire, you will be paralyzed by the, over, you will be overcome with how much to do and you do nothing, which is the worst thing in the world. Right. But that's what people do. They get paralyzed with how much uh-huh. is out of control and think there's so much they've got to do to make things right that they do nothing and it never gets fixed. Oh, this is good. And so I it does believe paralyze people. It oh, does. Yeah. You get paralyzed. It, it, you get sitting there going, you know, look, that wildfire is nuts. It is like out of everything. Like, how do I even begin to contain it? Look, those firefighters, you can tell you what they do. They go, look, let's just fill the helicopter with water and start dropping it. We can do that and let somebody else do it. You know, and then well, they and go, inter- let's start digging a little bit of a ditch over here. It's like one thing. It may not do it, but you know what? It's better than sitting still. Right. And they do, they actually do. That's why for days sometimes on these massive fires, you'll hear a 10% containment. And yeah. to the rest of us are like, really? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. well, you guys have been out there for days, yeah. you know, but it's little by little by little. And eventually they are able yes. to, you know, surround it or, you know, extinguish in, in some point. So I think of this, when I, when I heard this, I thought of this more so like on a personal level, like what your personal behavior is when you're really just sinking like that. And I think that um, a lot of people's natural inclination is to go to more destruction so yes like alcohol that's one thing that i'm yes, i'm glad true. that i've always naturally been inclined to i'm only having a cocktail for a celebration yeah i don't if things are not going well i'm not saying i'm gonna 
go out and get crazy. Oh, I just need to wind down. No, I'm like, get everything under control. I think that the biggest mistake people make is almost um, if everybody's coming down on them for, you know, something went wrong is they prove them right. Yeah, they that's continue true. Yeah. to prove them the right. behavior. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think, you know, I'm not an, you know, anti-alcohol person, no. you know, in in uh, appropriate doses. But I think that a big mistake people make is sort of the drowning your sorrows kind of thing, just yes. because it doesn't help anything. First of all, you're wasting the time that, you know, the hour that you're having with the cocktail or, you know, complaining about the situation is time that could be spent fixing it. Then you've got the potential hangover and just the lack of mental clarity and all of these things that are only going to make then that Then you show up to work worse. and you're hungover and, everyone, and the boss starts writing you and up then and they next thing you know, it. you lose your job. And it spirals. It's yep. true. It really does spiral. And you've kind of done it to yourself by the woe is me and that everyone's out to get me and they kind of uh, sheltering in. But that is that is paralyzed. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. That's yeah. That, that's what people. That is what I talk when somebody so is you're paralyzed. Saying get out and just do the one thing. Yeah, because that's what Start. people do. Paralyzed is they turn to alcohol. They do all those things. They're just sitting there woeing in themselves, turning to all these destructive matters because it looks too far out of control to do anything. What you got to realize when something is wild and out of control, it is not going to be fixed overnight. It is not going to be fixed tomorrow, the next day or whatever. It's going to take time. And so one right thing at a time will move you one step closer. There's nothing they can do to that wildfire to go get. There's no massive enough helicopter to blanket enough water in one pour to put that fire out. Correct. What it comes from is all these fire departments all over that country one digging a little ditch here, one digging a ditch there, one helicopter at a time dropping water slowly contains the fire. Do not paralyze and think, look at the massive picture of screw ups that's done. Do one right thing. And one. then people get behind you because they see you yes. doing the one right thing too, and then you've got to. Yes. That, that, that's the thing. See, that's what people don't understand is when you do one right thing, and I'm talking about simple stuff. I'm talking about like literally doing the laundry. If your wife's really pissed at you because you've really screwed up and stuff's gotten massively big, your kids are mad at you, screwed up big time, all this. Look, just do, go do the laundry. So when she comes home, the laundry's done, right? Like, like if you've never done that. Like if you, the things that you don't do, do one right thing for your kids. Like if you've never been there a part of your kid's life, and they can constantly count on you being the one that doesn't show up to something when you say you are, show up to it. Right. That okay. spiral of success is easy to, it can go in reverse mm-hmm. too. Yes. You have one day where you do nothing and the next day you wake up and you're like, well, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything yesterday. Yes. Why bother doing anything today? It's like when people so, start a diet. Exactly. And they screw up once and then they just figure, well, I'm going to eat bad the rest of the day. Well, now you're, fir- now you're even worse off. The car starts to fishtail and suddenly you're off the road. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes in reverse. Yeah, if you do one right thing before you know it, you start to get back on track. Well, because what you don't understand is when you do one right thing and one right thing and one right thing, like Jenny said, people get behind you. Then you have champions in your quarter. Then you have people encouraging you. And it makes that one right thing easy to do 10 right things. Because it's tough when you're by yourself and you go turn to an alcohol mm-hmm. and you go turn to a drug and you go turn to being a paralyzed and being a bigger piece of crap. Then let me tell you what happens. Nobody's behind you, and it's very easy to go backwards very, very fast Mm -hmm. and be extremely destructive. But what you don't understand is the one little right thing and then the champions you start having behind you, that's that's when things things get easy fast because you got a group of people believing you because you showed them that you're somebody that can be counted on that can do one right thing. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I love it. I just just truly believe that – the one right thing with your coworkers, with anybody that you've done wrong, that you've lied to, and it's all out of fire. When I talk about one right thing, I'm talking about very simple stuff. Don't overcomplicate it. Just do the laundry. Just at work, just clean your desk off, right? If it's driven people nuts, uh, if you've always been late, just be on time, right? Do um, If your coworkers ask for something, just do the one little right thing. If they hate you and trust you, it's going to take time, but you will gain that over by doing one right thing, do not let you yourself be paralyzed. Do not let yourself get out of looking at the massive picture of things out of control and think you can handle it all at once because it's impossible to do. But one right thing after one right thing after one right thing will gain you a follower of successful people that are going to be championing you behind it all. So do one right thing, and I believe that you'll take that wildfire and it'll be slowly caused in and we'll be hearing about them extinguished in no time. So we got some interesting emails. We'll be back in men on third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. 
You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people and I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Go pick it up today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. Well, we always have all like the most fun topic. Like, I wonder if there was like a mic dropped in and just recorded kind of as soon as we go off the air and stuff. Because I think we always have very interesting <laughs> conversations as well. Matt, you, you probably record that, right? You probably just leave that rolling. Yeah, uh, let's yes, not. Yeah, I mean, it is yeah. on the it is on the file. <laughs> I delete it, but it is there. It does yeah. exist for a moment. <laughs> yeah. um, That'd so be one of those things like that, that news anchor in um, um, that got caught the off camera deal that they Lawrence put it O'Donnell, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, kind of sp- speaking of news anchors. Speaking you like of that news anchors. Anchor, huh? So he's so, in the segues today. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's yeah, getting stuff. himself his yeah. own news anchor wow. yeah. Yeah. with the cheesy yeah, segues. <laughs> cheesy man, just no, throwing the under the is table. what they are. That's right, man. Mm. I wanted, I wanted you to get a chance. I mean, not, you, you've been on the show several times. Everybody knows you're my wife, and that you've been on the show, and and that also kind of your little career path changes here lately. Yes. But I wanted you to give a shot to tell the listeners kind of your career change. Well, yeah, because hopefully some of them can watch. So I, as and I've talked about this a little bit, I've worked as a journalist for about 15 years uh, at TV stations all over the country. I've worked for NBC, Fox, CBS, different, uh, you know, all over the place. So I actually just left my regular job about a month and a half ago and just started a new project on a syndicated national morning show called Morning Dose, which is based in Texas, which is where we are. So it's like... Could not be more perfect. So I'm just kind of freelancing there, filling in, seeing how it goes. But if you are in, let's see, Dallas, Houston, D.C., Philly, Miami, um, Quad Cities, then you get the show. So if you want to tune in, that, you know, check it out. But it, Morning Dose, it's, it's on the CW channel. Mm-hmm, and it's a fun morning show. It's really like one of those where we do all the local headlines. So each city gets its own local news. And then we all do the big national story. So like today we're talking about Comey. I mean, it's it, we do all the, the basic big stuff, but we don't repeat it a bunch. And then we talk about fun stuff. And it's more of a modern Pop type deal because yeah. they have, it's, a, it's really driven by social media trends and social media stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much more of a more modern um, news type of show than 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 the regular local news. Well, yeah, because for decades, news is uh, the top stories. It's just what the people at the news station think should be the top stories. But now we have social media, which can tell us what people are actually right. interested in. Yeah. So instead of us telling you what you think about and what you care about, you tell us what you think about and care about, and then we expand on that. If yeah. that makes sense. Sure. It's it, a really cool concept. Now, yeah. now w- this is different for her it's because, totally see, look, different. she has been a, you know, it's been the regular lo- morning hard local hard news yeah. behind that desk. You're doing the deal. This is, you're, it's in couches. It's mo- it's like there is no anchor desk. I get desk. to give some opinions oh, on, wow. on not, yeah, not necessarily news. I don't give political or, you know, those types of opinions. But you do give opinions about more of the pop culture stuff, the fun stuff, the sort of social talker type stories. So it's been on top fun of news. to expand my repertoire yeah and so like it's so funny i was sitting there laughing because i go because she was like so nervous for the first i'm like jenny so nervous how long have you been doing this yeah like like a long long and i go stop you know it's so funny but it's but it's but it's cool it's we were talking about too though it's fun to have that nervous feeling like yes i missed that sure yeah you know like i had really missed that yeah because i had just been doing the same thing for so long and yeah. i really craved a career um sort of like injection of of nervousness you yeah. know of a new challenge of wondering gosh how's this gonna go it yeah kind of yeah it kind of feels good and, got, it, yeah, and having to up. open up some like it's like even like all of her news anchor wardrobe she can't even like it's got to be a change of what it's a different oh, really? deal like oh wow yeah because it's a more modern show you know okay, it's like yeah. standard issue anchor dress anchor hair is like that same same kind of <laughs> yeah. you know i hate to say i've got an image in my head but i totally do yeah, now that you yes. said it, i'm like yep i can imagine a million anchors and they're all kind of looking the they same all yeah. kind, we all kind of look the same sure. so this is much more um you know you can kind of do your own style your own fashion your own vibe and it's, it, uh, strangely enough, it's 
harder to let your personality out because I'm so used to kind of keeping it at bay. Yeah. Yeah. I've been released. That and <laughs> I'm and, free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you gotta juggle working with a new crew, right? People you're not super totally. yeah, you don't really have that chemistry worked out yet. So that can be a little stressful. Yeah. And, and it's a more conversationalist top show. So yeah. before you honestly didn't, you know, at her old stuff, you didn't really have to have that much of a relationship with them because y'all were just reading kind of your news because y'all's the in you know, the joking was very, very limited versus right. this is a lot of conversation, so it's even more important mm -hmm. yeah and, wow. and it's also important to know like you know how do you get to the station the, you know where's the restroom where's it you know oh, all yeah. those different things when you start a new job that we've all been through and you're like oh my gosh does mm. anybody like me i took them cookies the first day so yeah. hopefully that she took Smart cookies move. with the so morning dose on the cw yeah if you're in philly d washington dc mm -hmm. houston dallas miami miami, miami in the Quad Cities, uh -huh. Washington. Oh, in Portland. I forgot Portland, Portland Oregon. Portland, Portland Oregon. Yeah. Yes, wow. shout out to Portland. My yeah. brother and his girlfriend watched. I mean, it's been fun. My aunt has been watching in Miami. I've never been on a you know a national show, so that's a cool. Yeah, so the really CW, I'll go tune in, check her out. Thanks, babe. I think it's fun. I, I love hearing the excitement in her voice again about it, right? The nervousness. Yeah. I love that. Uh, you can tell she's fired back up like it's fun sure. like she's having fun again yeah it? and you're, you're you're right in that like honeymoon phase yeah. of the new gig yeah. where it's like every day is exciting and, yes. new, and you're not just yes. beaten down like a nail in a board <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it <laughs> it's good stuff well you got um, you we got, got a you've been getting emails. a lot of really good response to the podcast by the way yeah, yeah. we got a couple good emails here uh, we'll just give a shout out to uh, Wesley Lawrence, West Lawrence um, actually no West West is a, a part of my team oh really yeah and oh, um, gotcha. He sent a serious headline. So he had to send the email yeah, yeah, in. He's yeah. like, oh, man, he's my boss. It's yeah. a good one. He sent, he sent a serious headline in, and we don't do serious headlines. Wes, you know this. Wes. <laughs> but shout joker. out to Wes. But shout out Wes. And he said, I love your show. Maybe one day I'll join you. Wes, you become ADM of the year. Remember? I told you. <gasps> really? You, you, you get there. You'll, you'll come on in. Um, but uh, Wes, thanks, thanks for sending the... Uh, you know, um, the uh, email. It's funny. I looked at that email, and the first thing I thought, because it's so concise and so simple and candid, all I thought was like, I wonder if there's somebody Heath knows. Yeah, <laughs> this seems this seems like a like a like a bit. And so that's was very sweet of him to send it in, though. Yeah, yeah very cool. Thanks, Wes. Um, the next one. This is a good one. This is funny, too. Okay, so this is from Jody Hansen. Shout out, Jody. Um, send deal to follow up on the stolen. Fajitas. Dun, 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 dun. The stolen fajita story, so, which somehow has become enamored in in second shot history. Yes, it has. Been. Multiple people were involved in the fajita thing. Like Ooh, when this I came out, so many everyone emails. thought yeah. of Heath when they yeah, thought of the stolen thought, oh, fajitas. Second shot and Heath Oaks. Yes. Yeah, the fajita story, of course. So she said, "Hello, second shot cast." First off, I want to say that I'm a huge fan of the show. You guys make me smile each week. Aww. I believe in the power of positivity. If I'm ever having a ba bad day, turning on your podcast instantly helps to shift my mood. She said, I saw this article pop up today. It's a follow-up on the stolen fajita story. The episode made me laugh when I saw this article, so I wanted to send it in. So just so everybody knows, if you maybe you haven't been uh, caught up on some of the other ones, is we did a, a headline shot on the guy who stole about $1.2 million worth of fajitas over 10 years at his job <laughs> and finally got caught. Yeah. So the update on this was he just was sentenced to 50 years in prison. 50 years. 50 years in prison. So I've literally gotten, I've probably gotten so many emails from people that go, oh my God, the stolen fajita story is back. I love back. that they it's think true. of you with I the know. stolven fajita. I know. It's great. When you and, see even get this guy in the show from the county penitentiary. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Skype, hey, Skype him in. Call in from the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Skype him in. His one phone call yeah, is we'll, the we'll, second we'll shot. We'll hear on there, like, put in another quarter, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. But um, then... Uh, she went on to this one, which was a had made me stop for a minute and think. She said, Heath, I have um, a faith-based question for you. I've been a Christian for half my life. Although now at age 33, my faith is reaching a deeper level. Do you believe God has, um, has a plan already laid out for us, as in he opens and closes doors, or do you believe we make our own destiny? Question mark. Thanks for being such a bright light in the world. Thank you, Jody. Thank you for the email. Thank you for, like, I mean, just everything about your email, your thoughtfulness, everything. I appreciate it, and I'm glad. Um, I love to hear that whenever it does make an impact on somebody because it makes it worth it to continue to take the time to do this when you get people like that, that mm -hmm. it really helps. Now, you also asked a very deep question. No small question yeah, there. Do yeah, you believe God a has a plan already laid out for us, as in he opens and closes doors, or do you believe we make our own destiny? So here's what I would say. Um, I believe that God gave us free will, um, that we have free will to make decisions. He does not going to make every decision for us. I do believe 
that um, God, just like any parent, like as you for your kid, right? Like um, if you have a kid, um, I want Brighton to be a race car driver really bad. Okay, yeah. that's just true. I do. That's yeah. not happening. I, I mean, <laughs> did you see that sweet new thing she's riding around? In I know. I mean, how about so that? <laughs> I'm going to open as many doors as possible to make give her a chance to race cars. Sure. She still has the option to make a decision on if she wants to go open those doors to race cars or she doesn't. Yeah, right? Whether or not they're garage doors. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to make her I'm not going to make her do that. Okay? I'm not going to make her Yeah, that was good. Sorry, Matt and Jenny started laughing. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah that I was that was real, that was actually really good. I wanted to yeah, pat yeah. myself on the back that for that. That was good. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to make her make that decision. Yeah. She's going to make she's got free will to do it. I think you know, God is our father that that he does that as well. I believe that he I I, I like to think that he kind of has that same kind of silliness that i do about brighton as in i wanted to be a race car driver come on be a race car driver like sure. like like i'm gonna throw the little maserati in your face really young like you want to be a race car you know what i mean like I, I like to picture my god as a funny i like to picture him as kind of having a yeah. and so i think he has that like oh, i want you to be this and he's gonna set those opportunities up there but you got to take them yeah you he's you're he's not gonna pick up your left leg your right leg and make those for you mm. he's not gonna make you go left because he wants you to. I believe that you have to make that decision yourself. Right. Um, and I think that's what makes everything unique and makes God unique in so many ways, which is that that he gives us the free will and wants to lead us, so we make those decisions. Um, that's just my thought process around it, which is he got, I mean, you know those old things like you get slapped in the head over and over with decision you should make, and you keep going, well, I wish he'd give me a sign. And when you really look at it, he's giving you like 10 you know, that's him opening like the ten row of doors that he really probably wants you to do. But he's there on the other side. There's still five other doors open that you can actually make that decision, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that he guides you and leads you and puts things in your way, but you still have to make that decision. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I hope you know she'll have to write in and. and what's your What's your answers. thought on that? Yeah, I'm with you. I I, I tend to uh, sometimes not get the hint qu- quite. Um, right away with regard you've said that to me before you know because yeah. I, I, I'm that person I wish God would give me a sign and he's like um, <laughs> like how oh, you've been beaten over the head with this sign yeah. you know and um, so it is interesting to think back on the choices and I've thought about many times in my life when I didn't understand why things were happening in a certain way yeah. and I do believe that was a part of God's plan for me uh, things that might have been really difficult and or treacherous and or painful and then I realized okay that was a part of the plan and I am glad that I had faith uh, that ultimately you know I, I would learn something from it and or you know come out on top yeah yeah no that's awesome I I, I um you know, as Steve Jobs says in his quotes, which is, you can never connect the dots forward. You can only connect them backwards. And and I think that's that's what faith is, is that when you're in those moments, you got to have faith that it's all for a reason. And so, um, but you've got to make those decisions. I don't believe that, that, I don't believe that God is, is, makes you a robot for him. You mm-hmm. are free will to make your decisions. He'll open the doors. You got to decide to make them or not. Um, and if you're listening closely enough to him, you're going to make the decisions that he wants. And he's not going to condemn you to hell if you make the wrong one. Okay? That's not going to happen. That's just not what it is. So, um, but that was a good question. That was a really, that was a very, yeah, very thoughtful, thoughtful question, Jody. Very thoughtful answer, Heath. Yeah, well oh. done. The, the, uh, I actually that one kind of got me a little bit. I'm like, oh, this one, this one, <laughs> this one can be you cross lines real fast, you know? Yeah, it Getting takes a, it that. takes a tough man to craft a tender answer. Yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah so. I like that. Um, well, thank you for coming on, hon. Oh, thank you for having me. It was it's fun. I, I love ha- second shot. It's always better yeah. having you. Oh. So tell them where they can find you. Okay, so, well, the show is called Morning Dose, by the way, that we mentioned if you were there. So it's at Morning Dose TV. But my, you can find the links on my pages at Jenny and Chondo TV on Twitter. And then search Jenny and Chondo, A-N-C-H-O-N-D-O, on Facebook and Instagram. And Instagram stories, if you guys want to see behind-the-scenes stories of Heath, go to my Instagram. I'm constantly doing embarrassing behind-the-scenes videos oh, of him. I've got to check that <laughs> which out. Which is just yes, so please. much fun. Where can they find you, Zach? Uh, you can find me at Apple Zachintosh on Twitter and Instagram. I'm trying to get into it. Ooh, I'm yeah. weird about it. It's All tough right. for me. My, I don't do my life in pictures. I'm a radio guy. That's me. But it's great. <laughs> at, at Apple Zachintosh, yes. At Heath Oaks, at Ignorance on Fire. You can look me up. I love you guys. Have a good one. See you next time.
You're listening to RNCN, the digital destination for premium talk radio.